H3S2 and quad bin. If you've ever heard these terms, you know we're probably talking about spatial indexes. So what are they and how can they actually help you do spatial analysis a lot more performantly? Spatial indexes are actually global discrete grids, which means that they cover the entirety of the globe and they have various levels that go up or down depending on where you are at. While this might seem similar to a geohash or other gridding systems, they have a couple advantages that make them really, really useful for spatial analytics. First of all, spatial indexes are very efficient. That means you can process and query data much faster, and ultimately your storage is gonna be a lot smaller as well. This covers everything from storage, processing time, and even visualization where you can render data and much larger scales of data much faster with a spatial index. They're also extremely flexible, meaning that you can use them for lines, points, and polygons, and encode your data using a spatial index for any type of geometric data that you have. Another key point is clarity. When someone's looking at a map of just points, it's kind of difficult to pull out the trends, but if you take a look at a similar map, also using a spatial index, it becomes much clearer where the trends are taking place. Two other things I think are really important is they're completely objective. They're the same shape, everywhere you go. For the example of an H3, it's the same area at the same level no matter where you are on the globe. So there's no issues about outsized or undersized polygons and the area, well, it's gonna be the same for every single cell you have on the map. The last attribute that's really important is the parent-child relationship as well as the neighbor relationship. Every single cell is gonna have a parent-child relationship up to the highest level and down to the lowest. For any specific cell on the map, you're also gonna know exactly which cells surround it or its neighbors. This makes it very easy to do neighbor calculations and it provides a really good base for spatial statistical models like spatial autocorrelation or Morin's eye and others. There's really three types of spatial indices that are really popular right now. There's H3, which was popularized by Uber and is now an open source project, S2, which was popularized by Google, and finally quad bins, which were popularized by Microsoft and Bing Maps when it started out. Now there's no right or wrong spatial index to choose. It really depends on your use case and there's a lot of different factors that weigh into this. Now, you have to break your thinking a little bit when you use spatial indexes because it's not a geometry. Think of that hexagon or that square as a representation of a string. And that string, when you use the proper library, can tell you all the spatial relationships you need. This means things like spatial intersections and other common spatial relationship functions won't need to be used or processed in the exact same way as before. So if I've convinced you to get started, there's lots of different ways. Every single one of these libraries has bindings in different languages, but if you're in a database or a data warehouse, Cardo provides these open source tools for H3s, S2s, and quad bins that you can start using in any of your data warehouses. Plus, we also provide the tools to visualize that data very very fast without the need to create tiles. If you do want to create tiles, great. We have that option for you too. All of that information I just covered and more is actually stored in this report, Spatial Indexes 101. I definitely recommend grabbing a copy as it walks you through everything you need to know about getting started, using them, and which to start using. When you're ready to get started, go ahead and grab a free trial at cardo.com, or if you're a student, you can sign up for our student accounts here completely free. Thanks for watching. Any questions you might have, drop them in the comments below, and all the links are in the description too. And while you're there, go ahead and subscribe for more content like this.